I'm Harry Godber, Vice President and Orchestra Manager of the New South Wales Youth Orchestra, and I'm here with the incomparable Australian pianist Simon Tedeschi in his lovely inner-city home. Simon, thanks very much for having me. Hi, Harry. Great to see you here. You're playing Grieg's Piano Concerto with the New South Wales Youth Orchestra at the Sydney Conservatorium on Saturday the 20th of August, and I think I speak for all of our players when I say what a great honour it is for us to be playing alongside a soloist of your eminence. Um, Of course, you've played with great Australian and international orchestras. You've made chart-topping CDs and you've won prizes from all around the world. But I understand that youth orchestras like ours hold a special significance to you. How did that come about? My uh, break, and I guess every musician at some stage has to have had a break, was with a youth orchestra. It was with SBS Radio and Television Youth Orchestra. And uh, Matthew Krell um, heard me perform and asked me to play with the orchestra. I was originally 11, and from 11 to 16, I toured the world with that orchestra, which is why this performance with you guys is all the more meaningful because of uh, um, SBS's orchestra's... uh, um, closing um, and uh, this orchestra's emergence and uh, yeah it makes it very special for me I also played Grieg with SBS so since then of course I've played with many many youth orchestras and it's it's always particularly gratifying because you're playing with people who want to be there and they're very talented and there's always exuberance going on. Your playing has been described by countless critics and musicians in, in any number of glowing terms but how would you yourself describe your playing style? Um, I I would say I have a uh, um, pretty electric piano playing style, um, at times flamboyant, um, and uh, certainly uh, there's a lot of nervous energy there. I think a critic once said I had a white-hot level of nervous energy, and I think that that really is very fitting. What about your, your artistic rationale? Do you, do you describe your approach to music as being highly academic or perhaps more emotional? Um, Intuitive, definitely, is the word I'd use. I'm not an academic player, though I respect the academic side. I tend not to read too much um, or listen to too many other recordings when I'm uh, learning or researching a piece because I feel, uh, especially at that formative stage, it can get in the way. Um, I I think that the thing that's strongest when I'm playing a piece is my intuition. Um, I... I uh, always um, feel that my sense of line and melody is probably my most developed um, musical process. At the same time as intuition, though, how important do you think authorial intent is when it comes to interpreting a a piece of music, in your view? It's tremendously important. Um, I mean, there's, of course, the the pragmatic stuff of... uh, you know, a composer comes from a time and a place, and that that has to be taken into account. But then we're talking about music that is so great that uh, it um, it defies uh, what is pragmatic and what is tangible, and it uh, it's it's a meeting point of of the brain and uh, the spirit, if you're into that type of thing, and emotions, and then you add performance to the mix. I mean, it's very very complex, and I mean, most of the music that we pianists play is so great that it will forever be greater than what we can do to it and that's very humbling and quite awe-inspiring. So when it comes to interpreting something like Grieg's Concerto, a a really momentous work, how does the approach or the mindset you take to that differ from the way you might approach a piece like the Gershwin recordings which you've become so famous for? Grieg is one of these lucky pieces that is just so delightful that I don't actually have to do too much to it. It just um, unfurls naturally. Grieg is is very rare in that it is a work of real um, emotional power, but it's not a dark work. It's a very happy work, but it's not twee or casual in any way. It's very rare, and I think for me quite alone in... Um, in that regard, I mean Schumann has elements of it, but Grieg really is a, is about walking through, you know, a forest in um, in Scandinavia. It's about animals, it's about bird calls, it's about leaves, it's about trees, and so um, I just let it all happen when I play. Um, it's really so much about effect, but not effect in a cheap way. Um, it's just pure naturalistic effect. 
it's an amazing piece because it's it's so emotionally direct. I mean, in that regard, it's it's perfect for a youth orchestra to play because it's so young, um, it's so uh, it's so innocent, um, and yet it's uh, possessed with a great knowledge of of the universe. And as one gets older, music like this, because we become more self conscious, um, it tends not to be uh, as effortless. And so I'm trying to do in a way as Picasso did and learn to paint like a child or play like a child as it is. Um, even though, you know, it's fiendishly difficult in places. I mean, that first movement cadenza is, uh, is a very difficult a very difficult thing that requires a lot of separate work. Um, it uh, still nevertheless is a, is a piece that um, I, uh, I find as I get older, I have to just go back to being a child. Is the difficulty in the Grieg more in the technical side of things or in emotional interpretation? Uh, both. Um, it's uh, it's an interesting piece. It, it's either quite simple technically or ridiculously difficult. I mean, there's a bit in the third movement where you have to play from memory 26 notes in about two seconds. And uh, you really have to go over this part with a conductor because it's it's fiendishly difficult. You just wonder how anyone did it. And I've listened to a number of recordings and you can hear every single pianist is not really doing it in, uh, you know, they're sort of elongating the bar somewhat. It's 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 uh, a really notorious passage. I guess harmonising your own playing with that of an orchestra is a, a huge part of, of playing a, a concerto. I mean, it's a, a challenge that most pianists, I'd imagine, wouldn't face until they get to that stage. What do you think are the biggest challenges when it comes to playing with an orchestra? Well, playing with an orchestra, there's a grandiosity there. So if you're not much of a communicator, and I say that with inverted commas, um, that can be a problem because th there's a grandiosity. There's just a performance inherent in the fact that you've got 70 people with you. As well as that, the fact that you have those 70 people with you means that your dynamic level completely changes. P becomes MF. Or piano becomes mezzo forte. Mezzo forte becomes forte. Um, it's completely different. Um, and your whole tonal palette changes as a result. Um, you also feel very responsible for the musicians you work with in in a large regard because uh, I, I feel like a pilot. I have to do a good job. Um, there are 70 people relying on me. They probably think that they're the pilot, but I feel like I'm the pilot. They've got the score. I haven't. So I have to know it inside out and I have to know uh, um, potential pitfalls. Um, I mean, this is just the reality of performance and I have to really be uh, um, in lockstep with a conductor who I get along with well. I mean, it's really, uh, it's like chamber music in a way. It's, it's an interpersonal challenge as well. Now we're sitting here in your wonderful living room with the with the fire going, and on the wall behind you is hanging this extraordinary painting of, of you actually sitting in, in this very room. How does the visual arts and you know, other art forms play into your artistic approach when it comes to music? Well, it's very interesting because um, this painting behind me is by my partner, Loribel Spirovsky, and she's a, an, a, an amazing painter. And this, uh, she called this uh, painting Vers la Flamme um, after to a piece called Vers la Flamme by Scriabin, which means towards the flame. And uh, the extent to which... Uh, um, she influences me and I influence her. It's this uh, constant cross-fertilization going on. But uh, I am not one of these uh, musicians who sees color, but I feel color, if that can be explained. And uh, I mean, it really can't be over overestimated the extent to which uh, the arts are related. There's a music in visual art. Um, there's a, a rhythm in visual art. And there's just true color. Um, even if you don't have synesthesia, there's a true colour in everything you do. I mean, Grieg is a perfect example. It's pure colour. I see green. I mean, not literally, but I feel green. You can hear Simon Sadesky playing Grieg's piano concerto with the New South Wales Youth Orchestra in their upcoming concert. It's on Saturday, the 20th of August at 7pm in Sydney Conservatorium's Fibrogen Hall. The orchestra is also going to play Shostakovich's incredible 11th symphony, the year 1905, under the baton of artistic director Thomas Chai. It's going to be an extraordinary concert with a sensational program, and you can book tickets now on the orchestra's website, nswyo.com.au. That's nswyo.com.au. Simon Tedeschi, it's been wonderful to talk to you here in your lovely home. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Harry. Lovely to see you.